what extent would you say that business continuity has suffered as a result of its inability to effectively measure itself? I think there's two issues that come out of that. The first issue is if you can't measure, then you, it is difficult to explain to the senior management how you are contributing to the effective performance um, of that business in a way that has uh, real meaning and can be understood. I think if you can't do that, it sets you up for the second issue, which means you become increasingly marginalised. You're seen as a, as a backwater where something needs to take place, but we'll do the minimum required in line with whatever that requirement is. Um, and so for me, the issue is if you can't you know, measure, you can't demonstrate where you add value. And if you can't add value, then you'll be marginalised. In the Metropolitan Police Service, we use it as a driver in terms of some of our performance indicators, especially in terms of uh, contests, which is the counter-terrorism uh, strand around the prepare functions to deal with emergencies. So having measurement for BCM, I think, is a positive thing, and it drives our BCMS in the Metropolitan Police Service. Do you think there is sufficient effort on the part of companies to measure the effectiveness of their business continuity strategy? I think it's difficult for, for companies to make an effort because most of them don't actually understand what it is they're trying to measure. I think the majority of companies would welcome the opportunity to measure effectively and I think were they able to do that then uh, they would put in the effort required because ultimately it's going to let them understand that the investment they're making in BCM, um, where that actually adds to you know, the value of, of the business. And so in answer to the question, Yes, they do put in the effort, um, or some put in the effort, but uh, at the moment they don't actually have in place the conditions that allow them to effectively do it, and therefore a lot of the effort uh, is misdirected. A company's ability to measure BCMS uh, I think is very important because you can link business continuity into a company's corporate mission critical activities and objectives. Uh, certainly from a supplier perspective, I work for a public sector organisation, we use many, many key suppliers. One of the things we ask companies is to demonstrate their capacity and capability to offer us resilient systems in terms of business continuity, so yes. In your view, when companies seek to measure the effectiveness of the BCM strategy, are they too focused on the tools themselves rather than its overall value to the organisation? I think to a degree that that's a, it's, it's a fair statement. Um, I think when you're using tools, you have to be very clear as to what the purpose is and where they are adding to you know, the situation. Um, for example, I think tools are very good for providing a platform for information management. But ultimately, the use of that information provided by the platform um, is still going to be um, about people. It's going to be about people making assessments, people making decisions, uh, people taking actions, and people actually being able to, to move the, the situation forward. So while the tools are important, um, the, I believe that the focus should be around the human performance side and, and understanding how you can uh, develop that um, is as important or, in my view, actually much more important. Value in relation to mission critical activities is, is paramount. You obviously need tools to get that value, but I think both of them complement each other in a sound, robust way. So in, in my opinion, both are important. One's perhaps the carrot, one's perhaps the stick, but you need them both to make your system work properly. Would you say that companies are perhaps too focused on benchmarking against their peers as opposed to measuring business continuity's value to their own organisation? I think there, there has been discussion around benchmarking, particularly around benchmarking against your peers. Um, in, my, in my view, it's a bit of a distraction. No two businesses are the same, um, and therefore, what is it you're actually benchmarking against? In order to deliver effective benchmarking of that kind, then you have to have like for like. Uh, and since no two are alike, then uh, you know, hence why I would describe it as a distraction. I think where benchmarking can be done very effectively is where you have a, some form of building and verification program, building being the part where you're building capabilities, verifying that those capabilities that you've built are going to deliver what you want. Um, and if you have that program, rolling over a number of years, then you can actually benchmark yourself against where you were last year or where you were the year before. And that particular type of benchmarking allows you very quickly to identify where the, the issues are, what the trends are, and that allows you to focus on what needs to be done next in developing the next program. 
So benchmarking against your competitors, against your peers, I think has limited value. Benchmarking yourself over against your progression, um, I think has great value. In terms of peers, uh, the other peers for me are the other police forces in the UK. So we follow a national standard which is set by the Association of Chief Police Officers, or ACRO as it's known. We follow and we, the British Standard 2599 Part 1 methodology. In your view, what constitute the primary KPIs from a BCM perspective when companies are attempting to measure its overall effectiveness? If I take incident management as an example, incidents occur all the time and our ability to deal with those incidents, normally measured by some sort of time performance, is an indicator. Where is the real indicator? Well, incidents take place all the time. A lot of those are recurring incidents, which are very similar um, in nature. And it's preventing that recurrence that's actually a key performance indicator. The, 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 major, you know, the major incident is the one that you don't see so often. And therefore, it's much harder to say, well, what are the key performance indicators for um, a capability that we very rarely deploy? Uh, and that's where you, you, know, you have to return to measurement. And that's really, you know, have we got the right structures in place? Have we got the right people in place? Have we got those people to a level of capability that we can be confident they're going to be doing their job? Have we got the tools that to support them? And you can build a, a number of you know, key performance indicators um, around those, which should give you uh, a very clear understanding of where you are at any particular point in time and where you actually need to get to. Metropolitan Police Service have six primary key performance indicators in relation to our Business Continuity Management System, or BCMS as it's known. In my opinion, the most important one is around exercise and testing of live plans. Uh, the Metropolitan Police Authority, the MPA, set us uh, 13 corporate critical health indicators in respect of that, one of which is ensuring that any one time, on a rolling annual basis, that 75% of the plans are exercised and tested. Linked to that, of course, is having people in place to lead on BCMS, to actually um, deliver the plans and the training is obviously important also, and we, and we measure business impact analysis, planning, and we also do stuff around supply chain management also. What processes and structures can companies put in place to help facilitate the measurement of the effectiveness of their BCM strategy? I believe that certain conditions have to be in place. I think there's six conditions. Uh, I think you have to have uh, a top-down approach and that top-down you know, approach means that you've got a policy, that policy is endorsed uh, and when we're endorsing something it's not a case of uh, reading a piece of paper and saying I agree with that. You've gone through some sort of mechanism, most likely gaming, where you've actually put some thought into what you're endorsing and you've agreed it and out of that you've most likely built assumptions which will then allow the rest of the organisation to say if those are the assumptions that we're working on then the next condition that we need to have in place is the capabilities that deliver on those. The next condition after that is to say well if those are the capabilities how do we break those down into objectives and standards? And then the, the final condition then is to say well if those are the objectives and standards that we require let's put in place a, a building and verification programme that enables us to actually deliver on those against the agreed target maturity level for a particular part of the organisation. Uh, and if one of those conditions is missing or one or more of those conditions uh, are missing, I think it makes it very difficult to deliver on measurement. Most companies today have a number of those conditions, very few of them have all in place and very few of them understand the sequencing of what they're trying to do uh, and I think that makes measurement, and will always make measurement, very difficult. I think it's important to have a performance management framework wrapped around your business continuity management system. If you don't have a performance management framework, you'll never really know where you are. You'll never be able to measure your success. Key to that, of course, is ensuring that the data is viewed, analysed and used by senior commanders and command teams in relation to making sure that all parts of your organisation are match fit in terms of business continuity and unless you do that you'll never really know where you are in your BCMS system.